Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of our federal and state colors and our national anthem. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. Welcome to the inauguration uh, of Mark Dayton as governor and Yvonne Kretner Solon as lieutenant governor of the state of Minnesota. We will also have the privilege to witness the other constitutional officers reaffirm their oaths as they commence their second term of public service. Governor Pelletti, Lieutenant Governor Molnau, Governor-elect Mark Dayton, Lieutenant Governor-elect Yvonne Kretner Solon, Secretary of State Mark Ritchie, State Auditor Rebecca Otto, Attorney General Lori Swanson, Chief Justice Gilday, members of the state and federal judiciary, leaders of the state legislature, distinguished officials and guests. I am honored to join you in today's celebration of democracy. And as we do so, it is fitting that we thank Governor Pawlenty and his team for the graciousness that he and they have shown to the new team as they've readied to take office. The first lines of our state constitution declare that the object of our government is the security, benefit, and protection of the people in whom all political power is inherent. Appropriately, as the governor-elect has readied himself to take office, his focus has been on the people. He has chosen as the theme of his ceremony the phrase, going to work for Minnesota. This morning, Mark served breakfast to kids at the Paula and Sheila Wellstone School, and somehow I know that Paul and Sheila were smiling today. <laughs> By these choices, and like the late Governor Rudy Perpich, in whose administration he served, Mark Dayton confirms that government is strongest when every person plays a part. His strength, of course, will be tested immediately because of the monumental responsibilities these elected officials assume today. But while the challenges are daunting, it is the genius of Mark Dayton that he does not duck responsibility. He welcomes it. His entire career, career tells us that. As a teacher, as a commissioner, as a state auditor, then as a U.S. Senator, he has always been right there serving the public. And now as Governor Mark Dayton will govern as a statesman, a leader who listens and only then acts and who respects those who disagree. 
in an era when civic discourse is often cheapened by discourtesy and short attention span. shortage of water, <laughs> and in a time where undisclosed flows of money inflame incivility, the people of Minnesota yearn for statesmanship. Mark Dayton will be that statesman, and to quote the poet, he will be a friend to truth, of soul sincere, in action faithful, and in honor clear. Mark. We rejoice in this day. Now we welcome to the roster to deliver the invocation, Pastor Kerry Allen. Pastor Kerry Allen worked as a legislative assistant for Senator Dayton and is a family member of the downtown St. Paul Church, appropriately named Dayton Avenue Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Please welcome the pastor. Thank you. For those who wish to do so, please join me in prayer. Eternal and ever-present Holy One, one of complexity and covenant, God of hope and hospitality, source of love and life, known throughout the ages in all corners of the world in many forms and understandings. We turn to you, O oh God, of all our years, in this space of time, in this moment in history, for your guidance, blessing, and strength. You, holy presence of rushing wind and burning fire, ignite in us a new passion, a passion of service to one another on this day that dawns fresh beginnings, births us anew. When hubris overpowers, supply us with humility and grace. When convenience ignites, invites us to ignore the marginalized, open our eyes and provide us with compassion and love. <coughs> when the temptation to be complicit overcomes us, Grant us the capacity to resist. And when illusions and falsehoods become acceptable norms, birth us with the audacity to speak truth in love for all that is right. Gracious God, we give you thanks for Governor Mark Dayton and for Lieutenant Governor Yvonne Pretner Solon. As they assume new places of leadership, we lift up to you Lori Swanson, Rebecca Otto, and Mark Ritchie. We ask that they are particularly aware of your presence, O oh, one source of all, blessing them with inspiration, wisdom, and strength, challenging them with boldness and vision for the future, rooted in compassion, understanding, and courage. Hold tight to them, to our great state of Minnesota, and to all the public servants with the awesome responsibility of governing. In your holy name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Allen. We invite you to remain standing for the national anthem. It will be sung by Micaiah Ryberg, Ryberg a sixth grader at St. Mary's Elementary School in Bird Island. Micaiah?
twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes in bright stars through the perilous lights or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and to discharge faithfully your duties as Attorney General of the State of Minnesota to the best of your judgment and ability, so help you God. I do. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Vice President Mondale, Governor Dayton, Governor Pawlenty, Chief Justice Gildy, members of the judicial branch, members of Congress, and distinguished guests, thank you, fellow Minnesotans, for the honor of allowing me to serve another term as your Attorney General. Our state and our citizens face many challenges, including a tough economy and extraordinarily financial strain. One of my favorite presidents is Teddy Roosevelt. He once said about justice, no one should be so powerful they're above the law or so powerless they're beneath its protection. I look forward to following this tenant as my office pursues justice for our fellow citizens, enforcing the law fairly but strongly, and standing up for those who otherwise might not have a voice. Governor Dayton, Lieutenant Governor Pretner Solon, I look forward to working with you and your administration, along with our colleagues in the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches, as we work together to serve our fellow citizens. I believe that this is the 40th time that we Minnesotans have come together to inaugurate a new governor. Governor Plenty, I appreciate and won't forget the professionalism and courtesies you extended to my office as we've worked together these last four years. And no matter what future path you choose, I thank you for your service to our state. Today, you join a long line of Minnesotans who proudly served our state as governor. Governor Dayton, you come to this important office well equipped to serve and lead our fellow state and our citizens during these challenging and tough times. 
Today, you join a long line of distinguished leaders who serve this state as governor in order to make Minnesota a better, stronger state, and as the Vice President mentioned, to carry out that first clause of our Constitution, the one that says the purpose of our government is to promote the security, the benefit, and protection of the people of Minnesota. Governor Dayton, all Minnesotans wish you well and extend you goodwill as you take the oath of office as our 40th governor of the state of Minnesota. Thank you very much. All about the cameras. <laughs> Do you, Rebecca Otto, solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the state of Minnesota and to discharge faithfully your duties as the state auditor of the state of Minnesota to the best of your judgment and ability so help you God? I do. Congratulations. Let me be brief. Um, I'm Rebecca Otto, the State Auditor, and I'm so excited to be able to have the honor of serving the state of Minnesota again for another four more years to continue to work to make sure that the numbers add up. It's an important job, and General Nash is smiling at me. As we know, numbers are really important. Um, and I have to say that I really look forward to continuing to work to make Minnesota a national leader again, because we love to be above average in the state. We like to be the best. And I really look forward to working with Governor Dayton and uh, Lieutenant Governor Yvonne Pretner Solon, as well as the new legislative leaders, um, in tackling our problems as a state. And I am honored and will work very hard for the next four years on your behalf. Thank you. the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and to discharge faithfully your duties as Secretary of State of the State of Minnesota to the best of your judgment and ability, so help you God. Yes, I do. Congratulations. As we gather here today to reaffirm our support for our state and nation's constitution, we honor both the words and the principles of those founders who blessed us with these magnificent documents, those visionaries that put pen to paper to define the powers and limits of our government and to be specific about our sacred individual rights. They were courageous men and women. Some of them fought, many died, to establish this democracy that we can and have made stronger with every generation. 152 years ago, just around the corner, Minnesotans gathered to write our original Constitution. It was not easy. The bitter divide sometimes came to blows. The debates of that time, slavery, treaty rights, immigration, the role of women, reverberate still today. But they did not allow partisan divisions to stand in the way of their devotion to our state. They came together, they crafted a legal framework we still enjoy today, and enacted specific provisions to enhance commerce, to educate ourselves as citizens, to ensure voting rights, and to protect the commons. This year, this opportunity today, is a chance to remember those founders and all of the gifts they've given to us. Their example of public service, of devotion to civic engagement, created a reputation for our state, bar none around the country. People look to us for that reputation. 
They also gave us the tradition, which now defines us as a people, of people who give great appreciation and recognition to those who serve the common good. Our men and women in the armed forces, our police and firefighters, our teachers and nurses, our doctors, librarians, elected officials, judges and justices and community leaders, all are public servants who we honor. This year marks the 150th anniversary of the start of the Civil War. It was a war that defined much of how Minnesota grew and developed. Even the debates at our original Constitutional Convention were defined by that great and terrible conflict. It's an opportunity this year to help remind and inform Minnesotans about the defining role that we played in that conflict, especially about our volunteer soldiers who were the very first to answer President Lincoln's call to arms in the nation. It's an opportunity to understand those conflicts at that time and how they continue to shape us today. Our Office of the Secretary of State is planning on bringing the U.S. Constitution here to Minnesota for an educational exhibit, like we did with the Declaration of Independence during the state's 150th. We believe it's an opportunity and a very important time because so many central elements of that Constitution seem to be the subjects of major public debate at this moment. It's an opportunity for us also this afternoon, if you go up to the state capitol or the next time you're there, to stop for a moment and look in those beautiful paintings, those powerful paintings, and in the faces of those soldiers in those Civil War battles, you can see that devotion to our state, that willingness to fight and die to uphold the Constitution and preserve the Union. It's to those public servants and all public servants, past and present, that I take this oath today. All of you in this room and everywhere who day in and day out make real America's great promise of liberty and justice for all. Thank you. To perform our state song, Hail Minnesota, please welcome the McPhail Community Youth Choir, led by J.D. Steele. We're going to ask you to stand and join us. It is written in your program. We're honored to be here and honored to perform this song along with the Minnesota National Guard 34th Red Bull Infantry Division Band. Give them a round of applause, please.
the oath of office will now be administered for the office of Lieutenant Governor and Governor of the State of Minnesota. Do you, Yvonne Pretner Solon, solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and to discharge faithfully your duties as Lieutenant Governor for the State of Minnesota to the best of your judgment and ability, so help you God? I do. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm honored to stand here today as we start another chapter in our state's great history. As those of you who have come before us, you know this history we're writing is not some dry textbook. It's an adventure every step of the way. And there's no one I'd rather be on this adventure with than our new governor, Mark Dayton. He's someone who is not afraid to be honest about the tough, the tough choices I had. Someone who seeks the best answers, not the easy answers. Someone who seeks to bring people together for the common good because, because he knows we're all in this together. He's ready to get to work, and so am I. As all of you in public service know so well, our families are along for the adventure as well, whether they signed up for it or not. So thank you to my mother and my father, my brothers and my sister, and their families, and my children, and my grandchild, who not only supported me along this journey from the first run for city council until now, but I know we'll be there every step of the way going forward. I love you, and I can't begin to thank you enough. My family knew, as I did when I agreed to join Mark in his campaign, that there were no easy solutions to the challenges that we face. Today is our opportunity to face these challenges, together, with a renewed spirit of cooperation, fresh ideas, and enthusiasm. Today we start this new chapter in Minnesota's history with a clean page, when we're one where the old politics and partisanship are in the past, and we can start anew. We extend a hand to each of you, across the aisle, across the river, and across our state, to join us in addressing these challenges. It's what the people of Minnesota expect of us. I spent my life working in our state's healthcare system, culminating in my career as a licensed psychologist. As my career was stabilizing and my children were growing up, I knew it was time for me to focus on giving back more to my community. I looked into boards and commissions to find where I could make my mark. And when an at-large seat became available on the Duluth City Council, I ran for it. I never dreamed that I would receive such a positive response, let alone win that election. I continued to serve on the Duluth City Council for 12 years. I am passionate about Duluth. It's my home, and it always will be. My late husband, State Senator Sam Solon, served th 31 years in the legislature. When he died at the urging of Duluth City leaders, I ran for his seat in the Senate 
and I won in a special election. And so a decade ago, I brought my passion for Duluth and for all of greater Minnesota here to the state capitol. Here I've worked tirelessly, not only on behalf of greater Minnesota, but on the issues that are so important for all our futures. A comprehensive energy policy, affordable health care for all, statewide broadband goals, and quality of life for our seniors. I carry these passions with me to the office of the Lieutenant Governor. While the challenges before us are great, so are the opportunities. And we will seize every opportunity to get Minnesota working again. We can do it by committing ourselves to a homegrown energy, to lower costs for businesses and families, and to grow jobs. We can invest in our state's infrastructure, such as high-speed internet across rural and urban areas to expand business and educational opportunities. We can reform health care to ensure affordable, accessible coverage is available for all Minnesotans and address a growing burden on our state's employers. And we can reform the way we do business to make government more accountable to those we represent. Seizing these opportunities and looking to our future must be a part of how we solve the challenges of today. Together, we will build a better Minnesota. Thank you. Dayton solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and to discharge faithfully your duties as governor of the State of Minnesota to the best of your judgment and ability. So help you God. I do. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chief Justice. Vice President, Lieutenant Governor, and other constitutional officers, Governor and Mrs. Plenty, thank you for your dedicated service to our state. Other distinguished guests, my two wonderful sons, Eric and Andrew, my family, my friends, my fellow Minnesotans, I am honored, humbled, and grateful to stand before you as Minnesota's 40th governor. I especially want to thank my fellow citizens who voted for me and placed your trust in me. I will do my very best to serve you well. To those who voted for my two worthy competitors, I will do my very best to also serve you very well. I believe we all share the same aspiration for a better Minnesota, for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. We miss, may disagree on the details. May we never forget, however, that our honest disagreements and our freedom to express them are the essential rights and the great strengths of our great democracy. Yet what a difference a decade makes. Ten years ago today, I was sworn into office in the United States Senate. Back then, our country was on top of the world and on course to stay there. Tragically, two massive federal tax cuts, two lengthy wars, and two devastating recessions have damaged our preeminence and our prosperity. Here in Minnesota, two state tax cuts, two wars, and two recessions later, we stagger from one huge deficit to the next. 208,000 Minnesotans are out of work. 
And the state which used to lead most others in economic growth has fallen toward the bottom. The past decade has left our country, our state, and many of our citizens worse off than before, with lower standards of living, larger debts and deficits, less assured of future success. The stakes now are high. This coming decade will determine whether we suffer the historical declines of previous superpowers or write a new chapter for future historians. If anyone can do it, we can, and we must. Previous generations of Minnesotans and other Americans face graver dangers under worse conditions with fewer resources than we do today. They summoned their collective knowledge, courage, and resolve. They persevered, and they prevailed by working together. They won their independence. They preserved our nation. They overcame the Great Depression. They worked their way to the top by working together. Now it's our turn, our challenge, and our responsibility. Now is the time for us to summon our best, to be our best, and to do our best. To all Minnesotans, I say, let's get Minnesota working again by working together. That is what we are called upon to do for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. To the 201 Minnesota legislators who will take office tomorrow, I say let's get Minnesota working again by working together. That is what we were elected to do. We were all elected by just a fraction of Minnesotans, but our responsibility now is to serve all Minnesotans. If we serve only the people who voted for us, we guarantee destructive division and we risk paralyzing gridlock. We must do better than that. The people of Minnesota expect better from us than that. Their futures depend upon us being better than that. And I believe we will. I have three top priorities, and I ask all of you throughout this state to work with me cooperatively and constructively to achieve them. First, to bring more jobs to Minnesota. Secondly, to balance the state budget fairly. And third, to improve government services. My top priority is to get Minnesotans working again. The 208,000 who are unemployed, the thousands more who are underemployed, stuck in low-paying, dead-end jobs, whose economic security is shattered, whose hope for a better future is threatened. Their futures are also our futures. As our great United States Senator Paul Wellstone said, we all do better when we all do better. <laughs> to all do better means we all must find common ground in our shared desire for a better Minnesota, in our shared love for our state, in our shared appreciation for all it has given to each of us. Now the future of Minnesota depends on us on all of us working together. To Minnesota's business owners and executives, working men and women, farmers, teachers, and civic leaders, I say let's get Minnesota working together. We can't succeed without you. You can't succeed without one another. As we work to put Minnesota back to work, we have many advantages. Talented, hardworking, productive people, strong companies, innovative small businesses, good schools, colleges, and universities, valuable natural resources, and a priceless quality of life. Let us recognize all that is good about Minnesota and make it better by working together. My second urgent priority is to clean up the state's financial mess, a responsibility I will share with the new legislature and ultimately with all of you. Some people think eliminating a $6.2 billion deficit, almost 20% of expected revenues, will be simple and easy. I don't. As my friend and former colleague, Senator Tom Harkin of Iowa, likes to say, for every complex problem, there is almost always a simple solution, and it's almost always wrong. My proposed budget solution will be reasonable, balanced, and painful. 
because I see no easy alternative. I will insist that any final solution make Minnesota's overall tax burden more progressive, not more regressive. I respect that no one likes paying taxes, and almost everyone would like to pay less, which is why it is essential that everyone paying taxes knows everyone else is paying their fair share, and also knows <laughs> and also knows that I will do everything possible to assure those hard-earned dollars are spent only to provide the best possible public services for a better Minnesota. To those who sincerely believe that the state budget can be balanced with no tax increase, including no forced property tax increase, I say if you can do so without destroying our schools, hospitals, and public safety, please send me your bill so I can sign it immediately. Otherwise, otherwise let's begin tomorrow and in May conclude this challenging, complicated, and essential process by working together. And let's always remember that working together requires responsible cooperation and reasonable compromise, as well as sharing the best ideas we all have together. Third, we must improve the services we provide our citizens, starting with education innovation and including more affordable health care, better, better natural resource protection, streamlined business regulation, improved transportation, and greater cost efficiencies throughout government. While everything is important, education is first and foremost. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is more essential to our state's success than providing all our students with the world's best education. Yet nothing has divided educators, policymakers, and parents more in recent years than how best to provide it and how to fund it adequately. Meanwhile, we're failing our students and thus failing our future. Overcrowded classrooms, like the 36 children in a fifth grade classroom in Rochester. Four day school weeks, as in War Road, forcing children to stay at home alone while their parents are working. Unaffordable college tuitions leaving the single mother in Marshall with a master's degree, 100000 in debt, and no job. Better education for everyone is essential to getting Minnesota working again and to keep Minnesotans working in the future, to give everyone the skills necessary to succeed in an ever more competitive global economy. Doing so must be everyone's shared responsibility. That is why I'm asking every business in Minnesota to adopt a school and contribute to its improvement, to visit the school and see its realities, to meet with teachers, students, and administrators and find out what they need to improve their school, now your school. A little money, a lot of help, technical expertise, remedial reading volunteers, adult mentors, new books, youth computers. Make that school's progress your shared responsibility. Other areas of health and human services also need our help. To all Minnesotans, I ask you to remember the words of the Roman leader Cicero, that in a democracy, the most important office is that of citizen. I ask you to remember that our state success is also your responsibility. I invite you to get involved in the betterment of your communities throughout our state. I ask every adult Minnesotan who is physically able to volunteer a part of one day every month at a school, hospital, or social service agency, as Yvonne and I did this morning at the Wellstone Elementary School, and as I will continue to do as governor and thereafter. Whatever you can do to help, Whomever, whatever you can do to help, whomever you choose to help, whether the young, the old, the sick, or the disabled, you're helping to get Minnesota working again by helping one another. 
In conclusion, let me note that Saturday was the first day of the second decade of the third millennium, A.D. What we do during the next four years will affect everyone who follows us, who will inherit their Minnesota from us. Their futures and ours are intertwined, and they are our responsibility. All of us want and need a state that works better than today, one in which everyone has a good, well-paying job with affordable health care and secure retirement benefits, where the world's most innovative companies employ the world's best educated people to produce life-enhancing goods and services, where strong economic growth and sound environmental protection are both honored and assured. Our children and grandchildren and their children and grandchildren will inherit a state where people from all over the world now live here together. How well they can work together then will depend on how we, well we work together now. How well we accept, respect, and even come to appreciate our many differences. How soon we realize that those differences are among our greatest strengths, integrate them, and put them to work for all of us. They will be born and raised in a state where their well-being will depend upon how well we take care of our youngest citizens. Their values will depend on how well we take care of our oldest and sickest. Their success will depend on how well we rebuild our infrastructure, protect our environment, and create new economic opportunities for them and their fellow Minnesotans. Their better future begins with us. So does ours. A better Minnesota for all of us depends upon all of us. So let us dedicate ourselves to rebuilding a successful state, one that is again the envy of the nation, a leader of the world. Let it be written that we were Minnesotans who led the way to something better than before, who created something greater than ourselves, who achieved together what none of us could have achieved on our own, by working together, starting now. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Dayton, for that compelling address. This conclude, complete, concludes the inauguration ceremony. Please join the governor and the other constitutional officers for a public reception at the Capitol this afternoon from 2 to 4.30. And now, would you please rise and join in singing the Minnesota Rouser? The words are on your program. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good.